Well, mental health is one of the most important things we all need to take care of, but with almost half of us set to experience a mental illness at some time in our lives, not all of us know how. Enter best-selling author and founder of The Resilience Project, Hugh Van Kahlenberg. He's teaching others how to be more resilient and happy every day. After partnering with elite sports teams, schools and workplaces, Hugh is touring the country to share his wisdom and keep more Aussies smiling. And Hugh Van Kahlenberg joins us live to tell us more. Uh, Hugh, there has been so much stigma around mental health in the past. We do feel that we're making some steps, are we? Is, it, is that sort of stigma breaking down? We've come so far. Mm. I mean, I think about when my mum and dad sat me down and told me my little sister had a mental illness. That was 1996. And I had no idea what they were talking about. I was 17 years old. I had no idea. Mm. Um, and, and then I think back to even my, I've heard stories about my grandparents, in fact one of my grandparents, I hear stories about them and look back and think I'm sure they were struggling with some kind of mental illness. There is no way back then they're going to put their hand up and ask for help. I was at a football club not too long ago, I work a lot of the elite sides and one of the players got up and said I'm not playing this weekend because, you know, due to depression. Totally fine. Mm. It, it was like you'd said, you know, I've sprained my ankle, I can't play, it was the same yeah. kind of thing. So we've come so far, and, and, and I think it's fantastic, you know, the place we find ourselves in now with mental health. Yeah, long way to go, but it is good that we can talk about it and talk about it a lot on this program. You've reached a, a lot of people with your program, from professional athletes to young school children. Are there different ways to teach mental health skills to different people, different ages, different occupations? It's funny, I had a day the other day where I was literally working on our prep program for five and six year olds, and that afternoon I was with the Queensland State of Origin side, and it blew me away as I was presenting to the Queensland boys, I was thinking, this is, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying the exact same stuff here, in a slightly right. different way. Right, right. You know, we talk about gratitude, empathy and mindfulness as the three yes. key pillars to really improve your mental health. Gratitude when you pay attention to what you've got, not struggle with what you don't have. Empathy when you put yourself in someone else's shoes. and. The big one, mindfulness, just being wherever you are, we find that so hard these days. Mm. Wow, sure. is that mindfulness? How do we get around that? Well, it's like anything in life. If you want to be good at something, you've got to practice it. I mean, and, and mindfulness doesn't necessarily mean sitting there doing meditation every single day with your headphones on. It can literally be just making sure wherever you are, you're just paying attention to the noises around you or, 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 to, or, or the way your body feels or whatever it is. It doesn't need to be a deeply spiritual, philosophical type of thing. Do you mean look up from the phone screen? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah no, honestly, yeah. And it's so funny because we as... I know these parents are stressing about their kids with devices and saying, I need to get my kids off devices, but so many of them are telling their kids to get off the device while they're on their device themselves. So we've got to start modelling better behaviour as adults, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Because about 400,000 school students will be participating in the Resilience Project, and one of the big issues will be device time, right? Mm. Will be screen time. How does the program help the vulnerable age group? Because they are very vulnerable at this age. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I, I you know, when my... When I first had kids, I got three kids, five, two, and six weeks old, which is why I look so tired if everyone's wondering. <laughs> um, Congratulations. No, th thank yeah. you. And people would always say, what do you want most for your kids? I used to say, I want them to be happy. But I've realised now that's just unrealistic. They're not always going to be happy. What I want for mm -hmm. my kids, and every child around Australia doing our program, it's 400,000 of them, I want them to know how to cope when times are tough. I want them to have strategies and resources that... Yeah when they're challenged in life, they can pick themselves back up again. That's all our program's about, and, and that's what I want for my kids as well. So you're talking about that R word, which is resilience? <laughs> yeah, I try not to say it, I reckon people are sick of it during a so, pandemic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I get it, but OK, what's one thing we can do to maybe help our kids build resilience? I mean, mindfulness is one, so that's actually looking up, being, being aware, but then resilience. Uh, I, 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 have we got like an yeah, hour? I know. Well, <laughs> yeah, okay, but we're, we're no, no, I, I, I'll tell you one of the things we can do. Yeah. When our kids reach out to us, which they don't always do, when they do reach out to us. It's so important as adults that we don't jump in and try and solve the problem for them. I think we're so quick, we just go, oh my gosh, okay, why don't we do this? We could try this. Do you know what we need to do? We just need to sit there, we need to listen to them and then validate the way they feel. Mm. You know when, you, when you've got a problem and you go to someone or you're upset about something and they try and solve the problem, it doesn't make you feel better. The most powerful thing we can do, this is according to an incredible paediatrician, Dr Billy Garvey, he said the most important thing we can do is validate the way that our kids yeah. feel. So, and, and, and that makes them feel a lot better. That means they're going to reach out for help the next time they're struggling. Reaching out is a really important part of being resilient. Yeah. Oh, sorry, being resilient, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Uh, now, you're giving public talks around the country. More dates have been added to the tour, very popular. Uh, what should your audience expect and how do you want people to feel uh, when they walk away from this? Uh, almost like they've kind of seen a show, I guess. It's not a lecture, it's not a talk on mental health and here are some strategies, it's storytelling. I think human beings, you know, we love stories. So I just try and tell stories. Hopefully some of them are funny, some of them are quite uh, moving. 
and I hope they walk away um, and reflect in the next 24 hours or a week, you know, on on ways that they could maybe help themselves or help people they love. So many people are struggling out there right now. We need to look around and go, well, who, how's everyone going? What could I do to help the people around me? Yeah. But half the time you don't know, do you? You don't know that this strike, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I it's... reckon some people give off warning signs. A lot of people give off little, you know, little red flags every now and again that, that, that things aren't right. But you're right, it, it can be really hard. Some people are really good at masking it, yeah. really good. Uh, we could talk about this for hours and yeah. hours and hours, couldn't we? Um, for more information about the Resilience Project Tour featuring Hugh van Kylenberg. Well you... done. That's no, no one gets my name right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, head to our website. Um, a lot of people are interested in what you've got to say, Hugh, and it's a great project. Good on you, Hugh. Mm. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me, guys. Okay. Thank you.